Guten Tag meine Freunde and welcome to the Homewood run of the 1980s, only one more to go after this. This week we explore the dark recesses of the week ending 18th of January 1987. Number 10 is the subject of recent good natured monkey shines on this channel. Our last 1986 video was for the week ending 16th of November 86, the one featuring the unforgettable powerful Pexter, when Stacey Q was the highest riser in the charts with her mega hit Two of Hearts. So the relatively small gap in time between the two charts lets us revisit Stacey still hanging in there. After her charting days were done, Stacey had a varying acting career developed an interest in Tibetan Buddhism, became a minor LGBTQ icon and made an appearance on RuPaul's show. So, any friend of RuPaul's is a friend of the Righteous Bojambo. Well done, Stacey Q. In at nine is Don't Forget About Me by a band called Glass Tiger, who I can safely say I never forgot about them because I'd never heard of them. Shows what I know because these guys apparently are rock gods in Canada. The song which peaked this week at number 9 isn't the worst thing in the world. It has a facile melody, the turnaround out of the chorus is clunky and the drummer is a bit of a plodder. But we've had worse number 9 hits before and we'll have worse to come. So here's to Glass Tiger and their one shot of fame and fortune on the local charts. Singing its top 10 swong song this week is one of the biggest hits ever on the local charts. You Can Call Me Owl by Paul Simon, an erstwhile number 2 hit, still hanging in there from our November 1986 video. Well known for its video and its attendant buffoonery which accompanied it, the song remains a staple of oldie stations to this day. Hey, it's Kim Wilde again, with her version of Holland Dozier Holland's You Keep Me Hanging On, which peaked at number one for two non-consecutive weeks in late February, and is apparently an example of the high energy sub 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 genre of music. Who knew? This was Kim's last substantial hit, but she was a bit good while the run lasted and had good chart success in Europe beyond this. Nowadays, she earns her living as an award-winning landscape gardener, no doubt supplementing her fat stacks with the odd concert here and there. Bit of Kim Wilde trivia, she served as the opening act on David Bowie's 1990 European tour. Oh shit, it's the lady in red again. Kill it! Kill it with fire! <laughs> <sighs> Apologies for that outburst. <clears throat> now, let us progress to the more enlightened and cultural segment of our presentation. No, it's not the bit with the chimp, that's at the end. The biggest mover and highest debutante this week is the still stunning Debbie Harry with French Kissing in the USA. In at week one at number 22. On the kissing theme, the biggest dropper this week, down 15 spots to 45, is Let's Kiss by The Models who were reliable local pop stars at the time. Our longest running favourite this week is Venus by Banana Rama at 22 weeks and still had a few good weeks to go. After French Kissing in the USA, the highest debutante was Land of Confusion by the anti-Debbies Genesis, hairy, bemulleted rock oiks of the highest order. Number one in the, if no longer arsenal of democracy, certainly at least the latent orient of democracy, was Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bangles. A song that caused my pals and I no end of grief given the band we were playing at the time was called The Egyptians. We're in Wikipedia and everything. Check out the entry for Brisbane Punk Rock. But it does seem somewhat fondly remembered, even if the Bangles were a much better band when they were a jungle pop outfit like they were on their first album. And in the land of lives of quiet desperation, the pall of gloom would have been lifted by the mysterious appearance of Jackie Wilson's classic, Reet Petit, as the Christmas New Year number one. Fun fact, why not? This is the fun fact section after all. 
Despite not being a big hit when it was first released in 1956, it still earned enough money for Wright and Berry Gordy Jr. to get into the record business with Tamla Records. When they finally came around to pressing records in 1959, Marv Johnson's Come To Me being the first, Tamla's distribution model was for Gordy and his good buddy William Smokey Robinson to load a boot full of records into their car and drive from store to store looking to hawk them, usually on consignment. Back in the sunny side of the old hometown, the number one album was a hits compilation called Summer 87. It featured Stacey Q. Enough said. Now, unless my memory is doing me a disservice, we resume our narrative of number five, which is Billy Idol, a chap who never took himself too seriously and was well loved for that fact. To be a lover is a perfectly passable three minutes driving down the highway in your car kind of song, and damn it, sometimes that's just what the radio is for. And speaking of four, number four is up next, and it's Walk Like an Egyptian, a song which did battle with Kim Wilde for the number one spot in late February, early March, before George Michael and Aretha Franklin came along and tore the whole damn ash hopper down. Originally offered to Tony Basil and Lena Lovitch, the Bangles, with the aid of a clever video, took this song to number one around the world, except the UK, where it only made number three. And speaking of number three, number three is up next, and this is the first song in a heretofore unimagined All-Australian Top 3. On the week ending August 23rd, 1987, we had our first ever All-Australian Top 4. John Farnham's epic, You're the Voice. In a recent poll, 3% of Australians voted for Australia's national anthem to be changed to You're the Voice. At number two, it's In Excess, and at his very shoutiest, Jimmy Barnes with a cover of the Easy Beats Good Times, a good old fashioned stompy rocker tailor made for Barnes which allows In Excess to show off their old school rock band chops. A good old fashioned 60s style rave up, the kind that was fast disappearing from the charts. Well, we're all but at the end, really just number one to come. Of course, what makes number one is the most syncopated drums of our tip top funky little monkey. Time for Monty to go bananas. Number one this week is Pseudo Echo, a band much and often praised on this channel with their stomping cover of Funky Town, making Funky Town one of the few records to go to number one both as the original and as a cover. Much rockier than the original, the version spent seven weeks at number one, as did your The Voice. It also made number one in Canada and New Zealand and the US and UK top 10. A few years back, I went to see Pseudo Echo up at the Sunshine Coast and they closed, naturally, with Funky Town. The venue they played at was a stage between the beach and the main street, which was lined with tall apartment blocks, which had been all shut up to stop noise from the festival drifting up into them. When Funky Town came on, within about a minute, the balcony doors started to open and people came out to start dancing on their little balconies. People in the restaurants and the ground floors of the towers came out and ran across the road to the fence to have a jig and catch a glimpse of the band. It was a great night. It was a great, great night. A great night from great days. Great days spent wandering in the foreign countries. A foreign country we call the past. See you next time.